This is holding class online using Blackboard Collaborate. And then I get excited to get started and we move right into our material. So um, I wanted to share a little bit about this workshop. We are um, focusing on a few things. I kind of like this picture. It's a little centered. It's got a little bit of a freeing um, openness to it. So one of the things we're doing today is we're going to focus more on you presenting to your students. So there is ways through Collaborate that students could come in and present, but right now we're going to keep it to the basics and really focus on how you can communicate out with your students. Another thing that we are looking at is um, how do we quickly get you up and moving. So the, everything, uh, with everything happening, things are changing really quickly for all of us across the nation, really. Um, and so this is really about getting you ramped up quickly, not necessarily what we'd normally recommend when you have time to plan a full online course. So we're just kind of hitting the highlights and just going over how you can quickly get up to speed um, and be able to offer your courses for the next couple of weeks. And in that frame, we're also looking at simplicity. So what are kind of the, the basics we can do? How can we keep things simple? Maybe sometimes we are going to rethink assignments a little bit to make it a little more simplified for students. So we're just hitting on some of the core basics here. If you have questions about more advanced things, we're offering consultations. We have a lot of resources on our Keep Teaching site that you can dig into other things a little bit more. But I would encourage you really just to keep it simple, to make it easy for not only you, but also your students. Um, I also wanted to mention adaptability. So there, you know, things are probably not going to be super polished in this um, when you're getting things out, if you're, especially if you're just trying this for the first time. So just know that things may not go perfectly. So something may happen with your session. So you just want to be prepared to kind of roll with what's happening if there's some tech issues. And it's A-OK. -okay. It's A-OK -okay to mention to your students um, Maybe there's some there, I, maybe you had a doorbell ring or something while you're giving it. You can do all you can to minimize distractions, but we're getting ramped up so quickly, there's just gonna be a little bit of a learning curve with this too. So that is A-okay. So that leads me to my last point of grace. So have grace on yourself. Know that um, it, it, it's just, it, it might be a little bit awkward or different when you're first trying that. And students understand that. Um, even simple things, like if you need to grab a drink of water, you can just let them know that you're going to mute it for a little bit, grab a drink, and come back. Um, and so on that same note, we also want to offer grace to our students because they may not have the equipment and the uh, or the right internet connection. They may be coming on on a cell phone and using their cellular network versus Wi-Fi or an Ethernet cable. Um, they may be ill. So just know that as much as we'd love to have all students join us in these sessions, um, if we're doing this collaborate type of thing, they may not be able to, um, or that just something might go funky on their end. So just kind of keep that in mind. That's another reason why we record these sessions so students can go back and look at them later as well. So throughout this session, here's what we're going to look at. We're going to look at um, helping you access and set up your session. We're going to be recommending you just use the course room and not set up individual sessions. I'll be talking about what that is in just a couple minutes. This is going to be a super practical kind of a how-to workshop. I'm going to show you how to navigate navigate through things, how to get to where you're going. Um, and that way, even with that recording, you can come back and look and kind of do a step-by-step -step approach. So um, with that, we're also looking at managing the interactive components and um, how do we kind of do that in class, in, in the Collaborate session, how do we go back and forth. We're going to show you how to share your slides like we're doing. I put faces like I did earlier in the video just to show your video. You can also not have slides and have everybody just meet together as well um, through the video and audio. And also other things like websites, if the, you're looking at resources, you can pull those in and show you how to display those in Blackboard Collaborate. We're also going to show you how to record your sessions and share them, and then just some ideas for student support through this. 
So in the very beginning, we are going to show you um, some of our resources. So this is, you know, we've got a workshop. We're kind of going to be trucking through our material, um, but we have a lot of resources on our Keep Teaching site. This includes um, where you can get help from us. So you, we've got um, workshops throughout the week. We can do one-on-one -on -one consultations through the phone and through uh, online through these kind of collaborate sessions. Tracy, thank you for that link. That's awesome. Um, and so you've got that there too. Um, one of the things I want to talk about is just technical readiness. And this is kind of where I was going back with the grace statement that not all students are going to have everything that they need um, necessarily to maybe fully participate. So they may have a computer, but they may not have a webcam with that computer. They um, may have speakers and a mic, but they may not have a headset, which isn't a big deal because we can make that work. So um, students will be coming on. You may be coming on with either your computer or a mobile device, um, your phone or a tablet or something like that, you can access this through both. Um, having some sort of webcam is helpful if you want to do the, of course, the video and the face-to-face -face type of things. Uh, but if you don't have the camera, but you have maybe a mic and speakers on your, your thing, or you have your earbuds that you can use with your phone, um, or even just speakers and mic that came with your laptop, if you have a laptop, those can all function to help. Today, I am using a headset with a, um, with a microphone on it. Um, I have an external webcam that I use, but I could have also used my laptop one, or I could have done this on my smartphone as well. Um, ideally, um, you can use your ethernet and actually have your machine plugged into um, to have an actually like a hardwire line to do that. Um, if you don't, Wi-Fi can also work. Um, and then they may be coming on, students may be coming on on cellular and not have a Wi-Fi network. So that may give them a little bit of spottiness. Um, so those are just things to keep in mind where we need to be a little flexible with our students and ourselves through all of this. So that's just kind of a summary on that. If you guys have questions along the way, you can go ahead and pop them up in the chat. Um, so we have uh, not only Yvonne and Tracy here, Stephanie might be here as well, and we can answer questions that way as well. Um, and then we're happy to also address questions at the end. So um, one of the things we're looking at is how to access the, how to access Collaborate Browser. So we've got the, in the original course view, so there's two different kinds of course views that we have. So we've got the original course view. So that's probably what most of you are using in your courses. And with that, um, you just enter your course. And then when you look at this, you scroll down the left navigation. I'm gonna get my pointer out. You scroll down the left navigation and down there, you look for the tools link. You click on the tools link and that page opens up within your window. And then it's on, usually in the left-hand column, you just scroll down and click Blackboard Collaborate Ultra. So as you're going to set this up for your students, today everybody used a guest link to come in and just brought you directly here. This is where you're gonna go when you actually access and set this up. If you are in the Ultra course view, your course is gonna look something like this. You're not gonna have the black bar of navigation down the side, it's gonna be white. Um, and that actually collaborate is right there um, in that menu that's on the left-hand side of the course window. Um, and Natalie, we can, if that would be in your course site. So if you're looking at that, we're not into collaborate quite yet, um, but if you want to also grab a screenshot, we can also walk you through that one-on-one -on -one as well. So if you go into your course site here, you can see the Blackboard Collaborate. You click on what we call a kebab. It's three dots in a row. You click on that and then you can enter into the course room settings. Um, with this, we also show how to access Collaborate um, through a mobile app. So there is both the, a mobile app available for iPhone and Android. Um, so if for some reason this is something you can recommend for your students or you're doing yourself, you want to make sure that you are plugging in your phone just to keep it alive and active. Um, you also want to be able to use a 
you know, have them use Wi-Fi or that, you know, with your phone, it's usually with the Wi-Fi. So preferably Wi-Fi over cell phone service. And then just note that there might be some limited functionality for you. For instance, we're going to be talking about AppShare later in this presentation, um, and that won't be available through the mobile mobile. Um, connections. Um, you also want to make sure that you're not using the guest link to log in and you're actually logging in through your course because that will give you um, access as a moderator and not just as a participant. So this is just showing you kind of what it looks like on my iPhone app. Um, and with that, you can go into your app store, you look for Blackboard or type in just Blackboard Instructor. Please note there's actually two different Blackboards um, uh, apps available. The one with the pencil is student focused. You want to look for the one with the instructor, which looks like a little date book with tabs. So make sure you click on that, choose Blackboard Instructor, and you can download that into your, um, into your, onto your phone. So, and then just quickly, this is kind of what it looks like when you access that. When you go into your courses, they look just a little bit different in the app. They've got these kind of nice, nice lovely tile slides. You click on a course that you're interested in. This one is my sandbox too. So I just click on that, kind of comes up with a list of the content that's in the course. I click on collaborate, and then I can get into the, the course room from there. Um, I did mention that there's some limited functionality. So when we talk about about doing some edit settings. If you're on the app, um, there's pretty much the only thing you can do there is copy that guest link and there's not as much resources. For the Android, really similar. You look for Blackboard Instructor, you find Blackboard Instructor, and then you just download it. And you can see that it's really similar too. It's got really the same format for an Android. All right, so how do you set up a session? Once you are in the um, course room area, you're going to be able to, to see that there are um, there are the little kebabs that you can look at. Sorry, I kind of bumped back. These little kebabs that you look at to, to access. So when you go into the course room, you've got a sessions list. We're recommending you just go focus on the course room. Every course already has it. It's unlocked. It's available. You go over to these kebabs first, and then you just go down to hit edit settings. And that will bring up your settings thing and where you can edit all sorts of things. So in this case, um, you can get the secure link or you might also see it as a join session um, button. So you can actually click in and join the session. If I would click on that, um, it would show join session for this. It shows the where students can, you or students can dial in. Again, you don't want to, this is for the phone. Um, so if you're having problems hearing or the students are having problems hearing or they're not hearing you, you can also use your phone as part of this session to be able to connect with students' audio. Um, having guest access is important. So because a lot of your students, your students may come in with guest access, um, we do recommend that Ideally, they go through the course, um, but you can provide them with guest access as well. Um, and that's where you can provide them with the link. That's the link that we sent out to everybody today. One thing with that, um, I would push them to use the course site because then they will come in and their names will already be loaded for them instead of them having to load their names. It's just a small thing. So another thing you look at is your session settings. The default attendee role is participant. So that is kind of what we had everybody come in today. That's just normally what's set. But for some reason, maybe you have a TA or somebody who's helping you. You can switch that and also make um, some people moderators as well when they get into the session. So but recommend just keep that as participants. So then with your recording, um, you can allow recording downloads. Um, that's something that if you were going to download it, what we're going to tell you is just go ahead and send them. Uh, Blackboard is Collaborate will actually record all of this. There will be a link in Blackboard Collaborate that we're going to show you how to get to. You can send them that, to that link directly, and they'll have all of that information there. Um, and this is where some of your setup. So if you are going to have 95 to 100 people on there, um, you may want to click off on that audio and visual, the video, which is what we did today. You can definitely keep that 
that up going if you want. Um, if you have the, the, you want them to be able to post chat messages. So yes, we definitely wanted you to post chat messages today. So we have that functionality going and that's how you're able to chat. Um, maybe there's some reason why you wouldn't want to have that active, um, but just keep in mind that it would just be a presentation that's going out. It might be live, but if you don't have audio or visual or chat messages, there's really no way to interact with your students. So it, it might not be the best tool if that if you're just trying to do some type of recording or just beaming things out um, and then draw on the whiteboard so we've had some folks to that are already trying out that whiteboard we'll have a chance to try it out again later in the session um, and then finally you want to make sure that you're in enabling the session telephony so this is going to be able to let them use that this dial-up number to get in so those are kind of the main things to look at. You can always come back to this slide in the presentation to kind of look at how you're setting things up. So that is the setup. Um, when you are ready to join a session, um, again, we've provided you with a guest link. This is how you do it in a course. So you're in a course site, you've accessed Collaborate in one of the ways I showed you a little bit earlier, and it, you just click on this area. You can actually click on any of this area here and get into the actual session. And then this little box will slide up, the menu will slide up, and you just click join the course room, and then you'll be there at the start just like you were um, like you did today with that direct link with the um, joining a session with an app this is kind of with the app through an iPhone this is how it looks you're in your course site you scroll down click on collaborate shows you the course course room you click on it and then it asks to access the microphone you want to just do that to allow that even students want to do that even if they're not using verbally just because it, it um, gets a little funky if you don't and sometimes doesn't let you in the sessions at least in my experience so just make sure that they are able to do that and sometimes you might have um, the phone ringing, which I apologize, I didn't uh, mute that. So things will happen. You got to be a little flexible on that. Um, something I just forgot to do as part of my prep for the session. So acknowledge it and then just kind of move along. So I just hung up on whoever was calling with that. So same thing you do with joining a session in the um, Android looks the same. You get to your course list, you click on collaborate, hit your course room, and it takes you to the beginning there. So when you are ready to record your session, you are in this course room. At the upper left, you're going to see a hamburger menu. So that is a three lines stacked on top of each other. That's in the upper left. You click on that, and this panel will slide out. There will be a panel that slides out. The first thing list on that panel says start recording. So whenever you are ready to start your recording, you just click on that, and it will start recording the slides and the presentation. And then that'll keep recording until you want to turn it off. Uh, the second thing is, I mentioned, if you look at the bottom right of your screen, you've got that going back to that gear icon that's in the menu. This is the setup with what they walk through if you have audio. So what it'll do is it'll ask you about your audio first. Um, and you can kind of choose which one. You may have multiple mics or multiple things, like I've got a laptop mic. I also have one on my webcam. And and then I have one on my headset. So I just I just wanted to make sure that my headset was picking up. So that's what I picked. And then you want to go to your video. It's going to ask for your video. I have different videos as well. Again, I have one on my laptop and I have one on my um, webcam as well. This is where if you get a little funky, you're like, oh no, what's happening? In this case, I have a sticker over my laptop screen. And so that way it's showing that. So I know, ooh, something's not, it's not wrong with the camera. I just have that sticker over it. So I kind of wanted to show that just to give you an idea that if something looks a little funky, maybe you're not coming from the right camera or something. So what I was doing earlier when you saw my face earlier, that was actually coming from my external web camera. 
Um, managing audio and video before and after a session. I mentioned this in the setup. If you're prior to entering the session, you want to make sure that if you want students to be able to share audio and video themselves, you want to make sure to have those boxes clicked. Um, if you have them clicked, um, I'm going to show you how to mute the mics. We can ask them. We ask them to mute their mics. We show them how in the beginning where that is. But sometimes maybe students are fumbling. They don't quite see it. Somebody doesn't quite understand how to mute that. Um, and so if you're in the middle of a session, what you can do is go to the participants list. Now that is in the bottom right hand corner that has the two people um, sitting next to each other. So it's it's right between the chat box and the, the share button that has this little arrow right here. So you, you can see that, click on that. It'll give you the list of participants. And by the participants' names, there's little mics of people who have not muted their microphone. So you see, when you see those, you can go individually to somebody. So you just go to this little kebab thing to the right of their name. You click on it. And then you just scroll down in the menu and hit mute. So that will mute their microphone. If you want to mute everybody's microphones, you can go up through here through the, the kebab. Again, you see that maybe there's more microphones that are turned on next to people's names that you can find that uh, you can click on that uh, kebab right there and then hit mute all. Now that is kind of a temporary measure because people can turn their mics back on. But if somebody just mistakenly has their mic on, uh, can mute them and then that's usually good enough that we just help them do that and there are um, they're content with that. So, and it works that way. So, um, and just on occasion, you just have to remind people that there might be some feedback or background noise and just remind them to mute that mic. So we mentioned the audio and dial-in connection. So again, that is in the settings box prior to entering. You can get that information. I like to send that out in email or post that in my course well um, in case people are having problems hearing just so they have access to a different way. Um, once you're in the session, students, you, you can go up or students can go up either to that hamburger menu on the very upper left and use your phone for audio. You click on this, it'll pull up that information information about the anonymous dial-in, or you can go to the bottom right menu with that gearbox again and hit that use that phone for audio and again it'll give you that information. So there's lots of ways that students can get that information to dial in. Again, you can provide it for them ahead of time. They can go to the hamburger menu in the upper left or the gear box in the lower right hand corner. The raise your hands feature. So um, some of the folks were trying this out. We're going to go ahead and, and try that out here. So if you look in the bottom of your screen, you've got this little person. It's kind of in the middle of the screen next to that. You can try raising your hands. So if you feel a little more comfortable so far with Collaborate, go ahead and click on that and raise your hands. So I can hear chimes. We've got 20, 30, 40. So it's like really racking up. So in this case, I'm using this for interaction. So um, we've got a lot of people who are raising their hands. You can lower your hand yourself by re-clicking the button. Um, or it shows me that I can lower the hands too. So we've got lots of people joining. Um, and then to see what that looks like, you can see that it, um, We've got, uh, you, uh, they're right there, sorry. You've got this little screenshot of, you can see the way people raise their hands, they go in order of who does that. So I'm gonna have everybody go ahead and lower their hands now to try that out. You can also use this, maybe if, if people, you're using the chat, maybe you have a smaller group of people, less than 90 so people, and you want them to be able to ask questions verbally, you can have them raise their hands, you can acknowledge them, ask them to unmute their mic, they can ask their question or give their statement or feedback about something, and then you can ask them to mute their mic and go on to the next person too. So there's a couple different ways that you can use that feature. Um, the chat feature for interaction. We've I've already seen people doing that. Um, we've got people who are 
um, active on that. So with some of this, I'm going to go ahead and ask a question that I would ask folks to go ahead and answer in the chat box. So what are you thinking about using Collaborate for in your classes? Um, maybe it's lecture, maybe it's having some student meetings, maybe it's doing your office hours. So go ahead and put ideas what you're doing. Um, usually when we ask these questions, depending on how many people, we've already got people answering like this, but you know, sometimes it may take a little bit you it, you know it may not be as simple of a question as this that you're asking so just know that there might be a little bit of lag time while people are um, trying to think of an answer to that question so don't be afraid of that you can go ahead and, and let them know that they need to um, you know, let them know that there might be a little lag in the, the presentation as you're waiting to hear. What we'll often do too is sometimes read out some of these just to talk. Now, when you're recording through Blackboard, this will all actually be captured. So the, all the chat will be captured so people can kind of go back and look at that as well. Um, one thing I did want to note that to everybody that if you're using a mobile device it, um, to use the chat feature you want to make sure that the cursor is right after the last letter and there's not a space if there's a space um, it, it doesn't send but if it's like right after that last letter um, then people can just hit the enter and return and it'll pop up in the chat just like you've been doing with this desktop so as you're using, um, as you've been doing in, in the chat right here, while you're using the chat, there's some things to consider. Um, as you're putting together your presentations or your, your lectures and you want a little interactivity like we're doing today, think ahead of some questions you may want to ask in the chat and think about kind of that pacing that's going there. As I said, you're going to want to give time for responses. You may want to read some of the responses out loud to be able to um, answer them or connect with them or highlight particular points. Um, you can solicit questions from the group if there's anything that maybe they will, um, maybe there's concerns or things or you just want to have a Q&A, you can ask them to put that and then just talk through your process. Say, hey, this is why I'm reading this particular one or I'm going to pause this to take a quick quick sip of water while everybody's using the chat um, or just why you are um, kind of what questions you're asking. So just be prepared and, and let them know that you're pausing just to give time for people to, to respond because they need to think through the questions that you might ask of them. And so that comes to the, the end of this portion, um, my, the first part of the presentation. So I'm going to be handing this over to Yvonne now, um, and she's going to be talking a little bit more about some of the different interactive features in Blackboard to Collaborate. Great. Thank you, Jen. Thank you so much for sharing the strategies and insights to help faculty get started with Blackboard Collaborate and the remote conferencing tool. The Blackboard Collaborate system can be used for a number of different purposes when you're teaching remotely. And you can see that lectures, recording content, office hours, discussions. We've seen um, Jen demonstrate some of those discussions with chat can use group collaboration tools, student presentations. As she mentioned earlier, we will be focusing on the faculty and delivery of the faculty content in this particular workshop. A number of you had mentioned that you would like to share lectures, host office hours, record content. So all of those things are possible using the Blackboard Collaborate system. Now we're going to talk about sharing content. It's important for you to upload the content before you want to share it. So it's best to upload the content um, well ahead of the course uh, class session that you're going to be hosting because it may take a few minutes for you to, your content to upload. So you want to give yourself enough time and make sure that the upload finishes before the class session starts. And because we recommend that you use the Collaborate course room that's actually part of your Blackboard course, which is always open unless you lock it for some reason. You can upload your materials ahead of time and have them all ready for you to present to your students. I usually conduct a mini test in the Collaborate system about an hour before the official beginning of the class session that I'm going to be leading, just to make sure that everything is working properly. And then I conduct another quick mini test shortly before the class session begins. And the types of content that you can upload are 
images, PowerPoint, and PDF files. And if you want to share applications or screen shares, we'll be talking about how to do that in a couple of minutes. To share contents, you open the share content screen in your Blackboard Collaborate session. And you can see that there are different types of content. You can share a whiteboard, you can share an app or a screen, um, and you can share files. The second, the second image is an image of your empty Blackboard Collaborate room. And the third image shows you, after you've clicked on the type of content that you want to share, then this screen pops up with a menu of the types of files. So if you want to add a file, you click on this, um, and you can see there's a number two as the option. And then the files that you have loaded will pop up on the screen. Then you click on the Share Now, and you'll see the actual files that that you can share with the students. To access the content menu, you are in your Blackboard Collaborate main course room, and then you click on the share content. You can share the whiteboard, the applications. Um, you can also do polling, timers, and breakout rooms. We're not going to go over those options today because we're trying to keep it as streamlined as possible. To open that content menu, you would have clicked on the purple arrows, and Tracy had mentioned this earlier in the session. You open that, and then this share content menu pops up, and then you can select which kind of content that you want to share. First, we're going to talk about sharing the whiteboard, and whiteboards can be um, a tool to increase the engagement and interest in your course and students seem to think that they're a little bit, they're kind of fun, and so that helps with building the engagement. To access that, you click on the white, uh, share blank whiteboard in the share content menu, and the whiteboard will pop up in your Collaborate course room. If you want to work on the whiteboard, then you go up to the tools. You can see the tools at the top. There's an arrow. You can select to um, guide people around the screen. There's a hand that you can use as a pointer. There are shapes, and you can choose ellipse. You can choose square. You can select colors from the color templates, and you can erase. You click on um, the erase. The moderator has the option to erase the screen. You can also click text. So if everyone would like to just play a little bit with the whiteboard, um, just click on one of the tools and see what you come up with. OK? Somebody want to do some? OK, so you can see that, and it's kind of fun. There's a little novelty, but you can um, use it for deliberate pedagogical purposes. Um, adding interest and engagement is definitely important. OK, awesome. So I think you've got it. Everyone, that's great. All right, thank you. So I'm going to, that's awesome. Hello. So you can see you can share messages. You can say hi, bye. Um, this is fun. So. In, in the times that we're in now, um, you know, this can add kind of a little bit of um, kind of bringing down the stress level and um, just um, kind of getting the students a little bit relaxed before you get into maybe a remote teaching that they weren't necessarily expecting. So it's fun. Okay, so we will clear that. And so this is a screenshot of a, a whiteboard that I had created. And you could use it to create a mind map or some kind of a uh, graphic to show connections between different concepts. So you might ask students if you're trying to do some kind of a formative assessment to see where they're learning 
level is at a period of time. You could ask them to draw an image of how they, um, a concept map to represent their understanding of different topics that you're discussing. So that's, a, that's kind of a fun tool to use in Blackboard Collaborate. Sharing apps is another important tool that is available to you in Blackboard Collaborate. And before you begin your session, so before you actually start presenting to the students, you want to make sure that you have opened the websites that you're going to share in another browser. For example, if I am presenting today using Blackboard Collaborate using the Google Chrome browser, I want to share apps through that browser in Blackboard Collaborate. I need to open those apps in a different browser. So I could open them in Firefox or I could open them in Safari and have those tabs open. And then they're ready to share when I go through that share app process. You can share websites, you can share audio, you can share video. And on the second, the second image is a screenshot of our keep, keep teaching strategies and considerations that Stephanie Richter has been presenting. She started offering those sessions on Friday. And that might be something um, that you want to share. It's a video. Um, it has a lot of techniques for um, you as an instructor. What we recommend if you're going to use application share, if possible, use two computer screens. You would have one screen that has the browser that has Firefox or Safari and the tabs that are open with the apps. And then on your other screen, you have Blackboard Collaborate and you're actually in this, in this interface that you're seeing right now. And keep in mind that the app share is not available on the Collaborate mobile app, but you can still use other tools to communicate with students. When you're sharing content and apps, you click on the screen that shows you um, provides you the option to share the apps and what will appear is the different windows that you have open. I could share my entire screen, I could share an application window, or I can share the Chrome tab. And as I showed earlier, the video of Keep, Keep Calm and Teach On for our Keep Teaching series is in YouTube and it shows up in this tab at the top of the screen. And what you'll see is you'll see those navigation tools. You'll see you can play the video and the students will be able to see the video and they'll be able to hear the video. And at the top of the screen, you'll have an indication that you are sharing an app. And with these different content shares, the way you stop sharing them is that you click on the circle with the square in it and that will stop sharing the application. You can also share files. For instance, right now Jennifer and I are sharing a PDF file of a PowerPoint, of a PowerPoint presentation. So we created PowerPoint, we saved it as a PDF, and then we uploaded it prior to the session just as we had explained. and we clicked on the share content menu. You're going to select share files and the types of files that you can share are images, PowerPoints, or PDFs. And since we had the session, the PowerPoint preloaded, you can see that it shows up as an option on the list of files that we can share. You select that file that you want to share 
and then you click you select share now at the bottom of the screen and the content will show up on your screen this content this is a screenshot of the YouTube that I was playing when I was getting this presentation ready so this is what it would look like and you'll see you'll see the navigation um, and you'll have tools to stop and play the stop and play the YouTube one of the things that you need to know is to how to end a collaborate session you'll need to stop the recording we started recording early today because we wanted to make sure that um, all of the systems were all set up and ready to go before you stop um, before you end the session you need to empty the room you can manually uh, remove people from the room if you need to and then you leave the session so you look at these the screenshot in the middle of the um, of the screen there's a stop recording link so you push on stop recording um, you look at the attendance list and the you can see that I'm the only one in that room so when I leave the session the session will be empty but if there were other people in the room then you want to manually remove them and then leave the session and the reason that's important is because the recording won't process unless the room is empty so you want to make sure that it's empty before you leave the session so you're leaving the session and then the recording will start processing there's also a tool in the Blackboard Collaborate that allows for you to um, access an attendance report. And you can see that there's an original course view. That's a sample of what the how you would get to the attendance report. You would go to the tools um, on the menu in your control panel of Blackboard. And then you'll see Blackboard Collaborate Ultra. And then you'll see the kebab and you can go to view reports. In the ultra course view, you can click from the main menu and then you go straight to view reports. And the attendance reports can help you with seeing who was in the session, maybe somebody um, got kicked out of the session, maybe somebody had um, issues where they had other commitments and they weren't able to attend or attend the whole session so um, there it may give you some idea of people need supports that you want to reach out to or um, let them know that the entire recording is available um, because we're students are going to have um, many different priorities as each of us do during this time and we want to make sure that um, we're there to provide them support um, as they need it and yes, most of them will leave on their own, so um, you probably um, won't have to manually uh, remove people. The attendance report, um, you want to keep in mind during these, these times that um, flexibility and adaptability are important. And um, people are, you know, working as hard as they can to fulfill all of their commitments. After you've clicked on the attendance report, then you can view the report and you can export the report and you can see the people that had attended what their role was what time they joined what what time they left so this can be information for you as the faculty member also we want to make sure that you're aware of the accessibility and um, helping students with accommodations if people have worked with the disability resource center and they have accommodation letters then we want to make sure that you have the information um, available to work with the Disability Resource Center. They have different resources available um, and the phone number, the email. Um, make sure that you, you know, if you have any questions about that, ask the Disability Resource Center. They're there to help you and help students. We want to make sure that we are providing all the support that we need and the recordings 
that um, we're providing that you can provide in your course or help um, help you use descriptive language when you're going through and presenting and you can have live captioning get a hold of the, D the disability resource center and they can discuss various options with you and to just as a reminder we have many many resources on the keep teaching uh, keep teaching site under the faculty development and instructional design center uh, we have getting started we have techniques strategies resources workshops we'll have recordings the resources are continuing to build as the situation evolves and we're going to keep posting them on our keep teaching resource page you can connect with us at faculty development we have opportunities for you to schedule online and phone consultations we have additional workshops if you go to our keep teaching workshop site then you can see the different sessions that we're hosting and we develop new for this week get a hold of us we are happy to we are happy to help you we want to make this the um, most positive experience for the faculty and students as possible and we have many many resources to help you so that this is a um, as smooth of a transition to remote um, teaching and learning as possible and as Jennifer said um, you know these are sort of the nuts and bolts of how you can kind of get started um, these aren't the detailed uh, best practices that would would take much more time to develop we're trying to get everybody up and running and we're here to help you and as a last thought I found a picture from the home student center in the fireplace you know if you're teaching remotely maybe sit by your fireplace get your laptop get your phone get a cup of tea and just relax and know that faculty development is here to help you and we want to make this the best experience possible so thank you all very much and we're going to take some time for questions